Uh, but before I go, I want to bring out our next speaker, who needs no introduction. You've seen her on the news all week. You've heard her on the radio. And you've seen her posters uh, across the city. To many, she's known simply as Wonder Woman. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the CEO of the YWCA Metropolitan Chicago and your Commander-in-Chief, one of my favorite human beings on the planet, Dory McHorter. Chicago is my kind of town. Chicago is. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> I mean, Reggie, clearly it's so hard for me to call you Reggie looking like you do right now, but thank you just the same. And thank all of you for being here today. I have to tell you, though, Reggie, should you ever need a stand in for Michelle? I mean, I've been told we're both about the same height, right? We're both from Chicago, and we both wear local hometown designer Maria Pinto. So just let me know. If you're on a crunch, call me. But thank you for our wonderful sponsors today, CDW and all of their partners. We definitely could not have done it without these, so thank you to CDW. You know, we're really excited that all of you are here with us today because this is what we say when we talk about Conscious Chicago. You all are what make this marketplace a great place to be in. I want to also, before we begin, thank the amazing service. I see our Hyatt staff isn't out here yet, but you should know that because of them that we're all going to have wonderful meals. <laughs> and enjoy wonderful service. And Mr. Studemeyer's in the house. Awesome. Um, so we're really excited to be here at Hyatt. This is our first year back at Hyatt, and the service has been amazing, and so we're just very grateful to be here today, so this works out great. I want to invite you, though, to all take out your cell phones, because this is a very, very social media-friendly space, and we want you to be part of the conversation and congratulating all of our honorees on social media. So we won't think you're rude if you have your phone sitting right on the table. In fact, I'm double-fisted. I actually have two phones, so I keep them right on the table. So we want to make sure that we're participating in the conversation and letting folks know what's happening in this room because they're unfortunately not here with us today. So we want to make sure we keep the conversation active on social media. So when we told people that the theme of Leader Luncheon this year was going to be Conscious Chicago, people were like, what does that mean? What does it mean to be conscious in Chicago? Well, we said we know that conscious means deliberate, aware, purposeful, intentional, and we feel that Chicago is a place where good things happen, not as an unintended byproduct, but very intentionally. So if you look at Chicago's game-changing history, we have the World's Fair of 1893. It literally lit up the world as electricity was generated on a large scale for the first time. We reversed the Chicago River. Who does that? We did, right here in Chicago. And one of my most favorite, my husband's a teacher, he's going to totally get me for that one, but one of my favorite things, we created brownies right here in Chicago. <laughs> so very excited. Give a <laughs> round of applause for brownies. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but we're not done, Chicago. We still have an amazing opportunity right now, and that is to make Chicago the best place on earth for women and girls. That deserves a round of applause. <laughs> so as Chicago evolves within a 21st century global economy, the YWCA recognizes that our focus on women and girls is critical because we know that when women thrive, entire economies thrive. Our work is comprehensive and concentrates on help women move from surviving to thriving. We accomplish this work by creating strong partnerships with business, government, and other not-for-profit organizations. We know that it's collaboration that's critical and that through these partnerships, we can truly create a better Chicago. So our partnership model recognizes that we have an opportunity to leverage our collective strengths and create greater value for the greater good of our members and our partners. We are always trying to ensure a win-win-win. 
a win for our members, a win for our partners and their stakeholders, and of course a win for the YWCA. For example, Uber is a business partner with whom we are working to recruit women as drivers. In turn, Uber is providing our members with free employment-related transportation and promoting the YWCA through Uber's extensive social network to support our brand awareness efforts. We've partnered with, Chicago, with the City of Chicago's Office of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection, Roxanne's right here, <laughs> as well as the Women's Business Development Center and People's Gas to provide small business and entrepreneurship services, particularly to the south side of Chicago. Roxanne Nava, the city's chief small business officer, even volunteered when we held our own version of Shark Tank, allowing our entrepreneurial members to present their business plans to a panel of experienced professionals. We've also worked with local startups like Gard Lama, who created a personal safety service to help prevent domestic violence and sexual assault. With Guard Llama, police can be dispatched with a mobile app and electronic key fab directly to where you are potentially in danger. We help with the product development process as the founders attended YWCA sexual assault training and we supported their dispatch testing. This is just another great example of how we're joining forces for the benefit of our community. We have far too many partnerships, and I know many of you are here today, that I clearly have time to mention, but what's clear to me is that Chicago is indeed a conscious city. We know that collaboration is the way to create the greatest impact for society. And since the only purpose of business is to move society forward, the YWCA is transforming our 139-year-old social service agency to become a 21st century social enterprise. We strive to be the global role model and show the world how Chicago's business, civic, and social change sectors have come together to make a Chicago a thriving marketplace for everyone. I believe that in Chicago, we can accomplish absolutely anything. I mean, we gave the country the first African-American president, Right? And quite possibly give the country its first woman president. I'm so glad that you all have known about our tech girls because I guarantee that one of our tech girls will one day become president of the United States. So I'm very excited about that. So I really just ask you to join me in an unshakable belief in our city and to join our movement. Let's help Chicago really lead the way in making our nation greater than ever. So thank you for being here today. And before we begin the presentations for this year's Outstanding Honorees, I want to acknowledge that we've honored amazing women and one other man for <laughs> the past 43 years. And many of you are here today and you're members of our Leadership Academy. So could you please stand? I know you're out here. Don't make me call you out. <laughs> <laughs> I see Mary Dillon, the brave CEO of Alta Beauty, for standing, a former honoree. But I know we have many other former honorees out here, so thank you for allowing us to stand on your shoulders for the last 43 years. And thank you. So thank you all for coming today. And we'll get right into it. We're so excited. This, this lunch, you can hear me come and talk about a million things at the YWCA all year long, but this luncheon is really dedicated to honoring the outstanding men and women that we have that are really moving this society forward, particularly in Chicago. So I'm thrilled to be able to introduce the first of our friends, our first outstanding leader, who are, is already making significant impact in this city. So watch with me this introduction to Julie Howard. <laughs> 